So uh, one of the things that um, that your your people wanted to uh, do here when they reached out to me was um, was kind of clarify some foreign policy uh, issues. Uh, you've said you've had some takes, particularly on Russia Gate, um, that you know, considering how that has been weaponized against the left, was very concerning to hear. Uh, you've had some other statements on your website that kind of contradicts uh, certain things you have said publicly. Um, so would you like to clear the air on that once and for all? Where are you at on Russiagate? Is there anything you've said in the past that you think you should retract? Well, Russiagate usually refers to the democratic, democratic narrative that whatever the Russians did in 2016 justifies accelerating, escalating the Cold War with Russia, excuses Clinton's loss to Trump, and justifies censorship. And I don't agree with any of those conclusions. My policy toward Russia is we need to engage them diplomatically instead of be provoking them with uh, huge war games right on their border, continuing to push NATO in their face, not negotiating with them on the new START treaty, which expires next February 5th. That's the last bilateral treaty between the United States and Russia on nuclear arms. You know, So we need to talk to Russia. We got common problems, the climate, uh, the nuclear arms race. We're both involved in proxy wars in Ukraine and Syria. Uh, we should be talking instead of talking to each other instead of at each other through, you know, these different measures that were taken. So that's number one. Clinton, well, first of all, Trump was the loser. He lost the popular vote. The Electoral College elected Trump. The Russians didn't do that. So Clinton's got to stop that. Black voter suppression, that goes back to, you know, the 2000 race and the Bush brothers and their uh, lackeys in Florida, you know, disenfranchising blacks and that close, you know, electoral college outcome. So black voter suppression, the Russians didn't do that. And the Democrats, you know, should look in the mirror and decide, let's do the things we can do something about, which is get rid of the electoral college and they're worried about the green spoiling the vote. Let's have a ranked choice national popular vote for president. So that deals with that. And then the idea that uh, because the Russians may have done some stuff trying to influence the outcome here, and I think there was some of that, the degree we can argue over, but that doesn't draw the conclusion that therefore anybody who says something agreeable to the Russian point of view, like I just said, say about NATO, or, you know, Putin does want to negotiate start the new start and Trump won't. Uh, you know, people, I've been called a Russian asset too, as well as a Russian gator. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get into the, the name columns beside the point. The question is what the policy is. So, you know, I, that, I don't know what else you want me to say about the Russia question, but you know, that's that's those are my viewpoints. Well, I, I think in particular, you know, there were some statements you made on the show, Primo Net Nutmeg, that were, you know, pretty disappointing to hear, especially from someone in your position. Uh, again, I mean, the Russia hysteria, you know, they basically had a three year distractathon uh, over a couple memes that were intended to spam people, some of which came out even after the election. And, you know, you see the way this has been weaponized against Black Lives Matter, how it has been weaponized against DAPL, how it has been weaponized against activists, how it has been weaponized brutally against your colleague Jill Stein. Um, and, you know, when you kind of genuflect at that altar, it's very concerning to hear. So I, I guess in particular, do you retract some of those statements you made on Primo Nutmeg? I was kind of disjointed on uh, Primo Nutmeg. It was like, 70 minutes into an interview and I was hungry. I'd got up at three in the morning. So like I, I remember one point I was asked about the Mueller report and I said, you know, it was full of, you know, references to collusion. In other words, contacts between Russians and Trump people. It's over a hundred of them. And then I blurted out, I think Trump should be impeached. Now what I had in mind was the, the uh, obstruction of justice and other things, the emoluments, the self-enrichment, the nepotism, that blatant racism. I mean, I think by that point, Al Green had already put his uh, article of impeachment on for, for Trump's racism. Uh, I mean, the guy has a rap sheet a mile long. So, you know, in the context, some of the stuff I said may have not come across the way I intended to. But, you know, my view is, look, it, the GRU 
does what they do, just like the CIA does what they do. You know, back in, or I think it was early 2015, uh, we had slapped sanctions, Manitsky Act sanctions on Russia. And then they took over Crimea. And then we added more sanctions. And then uh, we found out the Russians had uh, got into the State Department and NSC and got a bunch of documents. And the NSC came to Obama and said, uh, we need to slap back hard. And Obama, who's trying to get this deal working with Russia on Iran, the nuclear deal, said, well, we would do the same thing. That's what we do. I mean, to me, it's like if you ever read Mad Magazine, you know, and, and on the margins, it's spy versus spy. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, Howie. Despite what Pete Buttigieg says, a lot of us millennials do know Mad Magazine. He was uh, he was out of line when he suggested. I don't know if you remember that, but yeah, Pete Buttigieg. I, I missed that, but yeah, I uh, love Mad Magazine uh, as a kid. Sorry. <laughs> you know, but spy versus spy is going on around the margins, while you know whatever else is going on isn't really paying attention to that. So this goes on in the background. Now, I think one thing we can do: information warfare is a problem. I believe. You know, when the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists moved their clock to 100 seconds to midnight, the closest it's ever been, because of climate change and the nuclear arms race, and they said information warfare, because these states, and it's all sides, are putting out this misinformation, disinformation, false leads. It's making it hard for publics to come together to get clear about what they want to demand their governments to do. I think it's the big problem. Sure. There, uh, initiatives from Russia in the Bush administration, the Obama administration, and the Trump administration to negotiate a cyber treaty to avoid this information war, the cyber war. And the U.S. rebuffed them every time. And I think that's because uh, they arrogantly think uh, they can beat the Russians at this. So, And we know they have. The New York Times reported how we infiltrated Russia's power grid. We did the stut next thing, I think it was called, in Iran and destroyed a bunch of their fuselages. I mean, we're doing this stuff all the time, too. And I think we need treaties regarding cyber war, just like we do with regular arms, where yeah, you have inspection and mutual, uh, you know, mutual inspection and verification. Wouldn't you say, though, I, I mean, it's kind of, you know, you talk about information warfare. You look at the media structure in the United States, which, by the way, in a lot of other countries, what we do is not legal. Our media structure wouldn't be legal in Norway, as it shouldn't be here. We have a complete corporate giveaway of news and information. Comcast has no business being in news. Meanwhile, they own MSNBC. Jeff Zucker, by his own admission, has no interest in news. Meanwhile, he's up there with CNN, along with Time Warner. Uh, Fox News is just a Rupert Murdoch wet dream. Um, isn't that far more problematic than some memes on the internet? Uh I don't I don't want to rank how problematic it is. It's very problematic for us here in the United States. And we got to do something about that. We need massive media reform. We need to break up the big media conglomerates. We need to have a lot more independent ownership. We need to have public support for independent but democratically accountable public media. We hardly have any investigative reporting going on locally anymore because the sure. newspapers are going broke and the uh, uh, networks don't provide, you know, you used to go out for a news conference and there'd be a person with the camera and there'd be the reporter. Now the reporter's got the camera over their shoulder and they ask you, what the hell's going on? What am I doing here? And you got to explain it to them so they can ask you questions. It's crazy. So we need to support investigative journalism. That's going to require public money with independent bodies, maybe picked like you'd be picked juries by random to oversee the operation. I think, you know, there's a massive, because right now we, we get basically, uh, you know, the mainstream corporate media, which is leaning Democratic these days, but they aren't, a, you know, they aren't hostile to Republicans, except they're hostile to Trump. And then Fox and, uh, you know, right wing talk radio, which is all over rural America. I've been driving through rural America, man. You can't, you can't get NPR in some places. You just get, you know, Rush Limbaugh and Christian radio. So, uh we need to, we need major media reform so that we have lots of sources of information, lots of real investigation. And uh, so. well, but the problem, too, is that they all uphold the status quo. I, I mean, that's the kind of bigger forest here. You know, I mean, you, you talk about impeaching Trump and it, the impeachment charade was nothing more than a circus. We don't disagree on how corrupt Trump is. 
Trump is corrupt to all hell. It, it, it's absolutely disgusting that he is president. However, while this impeachment circus was going on, they handed him gift after gift. One of those gifts was a brand new NATO that nobody talked about. He got that, or excuse me, a brand new NAFTA. Sorry, misspoke that. Brand new NAFTA that nobody right. talked about, that, that kind of just went through. They cut food stamps from about 800,000 people. Uh, they expanded his spine powers. Uh, and, and that's why a lot of this stuff is just straight up nauseating for a lot of people to see. It's absolutely nauseating to hear a corporate grifter like Adam Schiff talk about how Trump is a traitor and treasonous and this and that. And then the guy votes to expand his spying power and expand the Patriot Act. It's a game. It's a charade. And, and I think that, uh, you know, we really need to focus on the big picture here, that this, is, uh, this isn't the Republicans versus the Democrats. This isn't, uh, you know, like, like, like a, a meme warfare. This is the have versus the have nots. And this is the corporatocracy versus the rest of us. And I personally am not interested in giving any more credence to the fake wrestling matches that passes at news on a daily basis in this country. Yeah, that impeachment uh, hearings were another manifestation of the Democrats' Russia narrative. Because instead of getting Trump for what they charge him with, which is obstruction of justice and abuse of power for trying to extort the uh, Ukrainian president, Half of what they said was, oh, he didn't give the arms to Ukraine for this proxy war uh, fast enough and he endangered our national security. You know, the American people, if you wanted to get the American people behind you on impeachment and to get Trump out of there, you would have talked about all the things he has done that has hurt workers and consumers and the environment and world peace. And well, you would talk about his financial crimes, and they didn't do that, and we both know why. They didn't do that because they're complicit in that stuff, too. And right now, New York has enabled uh, the one of those investigative committees to get Trump's New York tax returns. And the uh, Democrat in charge, he's from eastern or western Massachusetts, says he's not interested. So... You know, they, they, I don't think they were serious about going after Trump because Pelosi was trying to protect her conservative Democrats that got elected in 2018. And she was trying to protect herself because, you know, a lot of the financial infractions Donald Trump does, she does the same thing. She knew more uh, about Iraq than she let on, you know, so. Uh, yeah, her money comes from real estate like Trump. You know, she's from mm -hmm. a big real estate family, which is basically the industry that runs local politics everywhere. That's the foundation for, um, I don't care what city you're in. I mean, Trump was part of the democratic machine because he's part of the real estate industry in New York City where he ran for president. It's almost like it's a big club and we ain't in it. I think George Carlin said that. Yeah, yeah, I, I heard that recently. I mean, reheard that uh, that rant. By it's been his. around a long time. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, no, the Clintons and the Trumps socialized together till the election in 2016. And so your kids. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placo. Go through it together and make it our own. Get your 